Good morning everybody. We are looking at uh, trying to do thermoacoustics in the time domain. We had covered the uh, frequency domain approach already and uh, we also looked at active control in that framework, pole placement control. Now uh, in the last class we derived the time domain equations for acoustics and uh, just to summarize those equations, they were gamma m w prime by dou t plus dou p prime by dou x equal to 0 and This was the this is the momentum equation and this is the energy equation and we derived this in the last class and this expression on the right hand side which is the expression for the heat release rate comes from a correlation and I mentioned that uh, if you were to solve this problem rigorously you will have to uh, do an outer scale for acoustics and an inner scale for the heat transfer and the hydrodynamics and then you will have to so there is a uh, in a Ricci tube if you are looking at heated wire so you have to be actually solving for a flow around a hot wire. So you will have to show solve the uh, flow and energy equation, the heat transfer equation and then calculate the net heat coming out of the wire and uh, that would be coming out of this hydrodynamic flow analysis and that would have to go into the heat release rate term. But I have tried to make a toy problem by bypassing that and, and using this correlation which was provided by my friend Maria Heckel, M. A. Heckel. This is the reference, nonlinear acoustic effects in the Ricci tube. Acoustica volume 72 uh, page 63, she is a professor in Kiel, uh, I think she wrote this paper when she was in Cambridge uh, where she was a student and uh, uh, so we use this correlation which is actually a, a modified version of the King's law from the hardware anemometry. Uh, the modification is in this factor of 3 because uh, Professor Heckel uh, uh, saw in her experiments that uh, if you put a factor of 3 her results were matching the experiments correctly and so on. Again, so it is in some sense put in by hand or ad hoc. Some other person may put 1.5 or uh, somebody else King put 1. <laughs> so uh, it, it depends. So I am not going to get into any debate as to whether it is the right value there or how to match the experiment. Uh, you could use something else either. So here I am constructing a model problem. Model problem is a problem. Uh, I think uh, uh, physicists use it all the time or model problem or a toy problem. So in a model problem is something which you construct and it has certain features, we see those features and such features are seen in, experiment, in, in reality. So this would be a model problem or a toy problem. Toy problem would mean that you are able to play with the problem. So if, I, if you solve it in a fully coupled way with the acoustic calculation and the hydrodynamic calculation and it takes two weeks to run each run, then you cannot play with it. To play with it, to play with a code and to get results it has to run in a few seconds or minutes or something like that. And then you can play. So you models which you can play with on the computer and playing is not in two weeks or four weeks time scale but few minutes kind of thing. Uh, you see something, you change the parameter, you see something else, that kind of thing is what I call play. So such models are called toy problems. So I must emphasize that when I say toy, pro, toy model, uh, this is not to be uh, taken in any derogatory sense. I myself created this problem so I am not <laughs> speaking bad about myself. So I am following the reference uh, in this paper. K. Balasubramanian and Sujit, my own paper. Uh, Balasubramanian was a student here, he used to study in my acoustic class and uh, my good friend also. Uh, the moment he has finished his PhD in string theory or something, uh, thermoacoustic instability in the Ricci tube, non normality and non linearity, physics of fluids, volume 20, article number 44103. And uh, we looked at normal mode analysis in that uh, problem given by McManus et al. And, uh, I promised to speak about uh, non-linearity because all the students were very interested in non-linear dynamics right from day one, so I have been postponing. But I want to get some equation before I can deal with it rather than uh, speak in a very generic sense because to speak in a generic sense you should attend the non-linear dynamic class of Nilima Gupta. Uh, and I will bring this cousin non-normality which uh, my friend Kaushik Balsuprinam uh, discovered in thermoacoustics and it was there in hydrodynamics maybe 10-15 years back. 
uh, but this is a simple paper, nice paper uh, written with the objective of uh, making things clear and so on. Uh, so please, I will uh, email this paper to you uh, today and uh, you can follow it, uh, hopefully it will be clear. But I will go through the steps and uh, somewhere in the paper we, you may find it can easily be shown that, but I will work out the in between steps in case you have difficulty. So are there any questions from last class? Okay. So if there are no questions, we will proceed with this. So the uh, next technique is we have a PDE actually, a partial differential equation uh, which is in general PDEs are hard to solve unless some special PDEs like your wave equation and so on. So the moment you bring in the right hand side everything gets messy, if that was not there we would peacefully solve it with our left hand as you would say here. <coughs> so there are lots of techniques to solve PDEs, the problem is these techniques are all specific to classes of problems. So uh, I will use a technique called model expansion, somebody mentioned a really rich method yesterday, I forget who was. Uh, uh, so there are a lot of approximate techniques and we will use one of that, we will use uh, what the thermoacoustic people call Gellerkin technique, but the structural people sometimes call it model expansion. Uh, again what exactly Gellerkin said, I am not going to debate whether, because there is some debate about whether this technique can be called Gellerkin technique or not, okay if you do not like that. Uh, uh, if you think Gellerkin technique is not this, then we can call it model expansion. But a lot of people in the thermoacoustic community refer to uh, a technique based on model expansion as Gellerkin technique. So I will use that. Now why am I using it? It is very simple and we can deal with it uh, uh, in a very simple way and it will work very easily. So that is the only reason. You, there are several other methods with which you can uh, like CFD based methods. So you can um, uh, use the acoustic equation and, and the special solvers for acoustics. Uh, like you, you solve the shock tube problem around each cell and, and like a good nose scheme and so on, but I will not get into that at all, they will be taught in some CFD classes. Now uh, so what we do is to uh, just to give a, a advanced summary, what, what we do is to uh, expand the variables, so here the variables are unknown are velocity and pressure in terms of some basis function and then we project the PD onto the basis functions and then we actually get uh, individual equations for the coefficients. Now if you think of, okay, can you imagine this, that is the first thing I want to ask. I had a little bit difficult time imagining it, but uh, I, I, I do not know. Is it peaceful what I said, that is you take the uh, PDE and project, so you write the variables uh, as uh, like a summation of uh, expansion of the modes or or any basis function, basis function you know I mean functions and then put it into a differential equation and then project the differential equation onto the basis function, does the statement make any sense? Everybody, is there anybody having difficulty with the statement? Okay, so uh, what I would mean is let us look at a, a very simple uh, equation, vector equation, so f equal to uh, ma. So this would be m uh, uh, acceleration to d squared x over dt squared, right. So this is strictly a, speaking a vector equation. Now what we do with our x and f, we write it in terms of uh, all vectors need basis functions, ba basis for the vectors. So uh, f we say is fx times i plus fy times j plus fz times k, help me out if I go wrong, uh, x we say is xi plus yj plus zk, okay. So we can write uh, this as fxi plus fyj plus if is that um, you may wonder it is a trivial exercise, but let us see what happens equal to m d squared uh, uh, x over uh, dt squared i plus d squared y over dt squared j plus d squared um, uh, how did it is it over dt squared times. So this is a vector equation, 
but I want to get equations for f x, f y and f z. So, you can just look and say that oh I mean it is trivially obvious f x is m d squared x over d t squared, but what is that process behind this trivially obvious thing. So, what you have to do is to we have this equation and I can take a inner product or a dot product with i and what you would get is so i times i is 1 and i times j is 0 i times k is also 0. So, I will get f x equal to m d squared x over d t squared actually at summation, but I have this property that uh, uh, it, it is uh, 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 i dot i is 1 i dot uh, j is 0 and i dot k is uh, 0. So, uh, similarly if I take a dot product with j I would get the equation f i equal to m d squared y by d t squared. If I dot product with k I will get f z equal to m d squared z by d t squared. So, this is actually you have a equation and you are projecting it on a basis function the same basis function you use here and to get rid of the to keep what you want and to get rid of the other things we are conveniently using the orthogonality property of the basis functions ok. So, I, I, I dot j is 0 means that i is orthogonal to uh, k or I, I is orthogonal to j i is orthogonal to k. So, we get rid of those two and keep only this. So, the same idea of this uh, vector uh, algebra the same thing applies for functions also. So, if you write um, expansion in terms of functions you can take a inner product inner product may be defined this way may be defined in another way. So, if there is an inner product you can take the inner product keep what you want throw away whatever you want and then you can take another inner product and keep what you want and throw away what you want. And so, here we are actually having so, uh, these are let me get some color. So, these are actually basis ok and the x y and z are the coefficients that multiply the basis functions ok. So, uh, I hope this is clear and we are attempting to get x y and z and similarly these are also basis functions uh, <coughs> i j k they are basis functions and we are attempting to attempting to get the coefficients f x f y and f z. So, that is the idea. So, what we did to state it again is to take the partial differential equation or, or here is the ordinary differential equation. We took the ordinary differential equation which is a vector equation projected it onto the individual basis functions and we got the scalar equations corresponding to those coefficients. So, we will do this procedure ok is that clear any questions on this please feel free to ask ok to give me a minute to erase this thing. So, here I have partial differential equations. So, P D E and why am I so eager to convert P D E to O D? So, I want to convert P D E to O D. So, what is my big motivation behind doing this? Yeah, O D E can be solved in principle uh, numerically at least. So, uh, P D there is no guarantee that can be solved numerically also. So, once you can get into R D you are kind of guaranteed that you can get a solution. So, that is the idea. So, <coughs> we will look at a uh, we saw the Riquet tube in last class. So, that was a duct which was open at both ends and in that picture that in the movie that I showed there were decouplers on both sides the big big chambers which actually maintain the ends as open end. So, I have uh, non dimensionalized the equations and the distances. So, the length of the tube x is non dimensionalized by the length of the tube. So, end of the tube is L divided by L which is 1 L A divided by L A which is 1. 
So uh, one more thing I want to say that the choice of basis function is not unique. So if we go back to this problem, <coughs> there was no reason I had to choose i, j and k. You could have chosen <coughs> e r, e theta, e phi, I mean you can use cylindrical coordinates, you can use some other coordinates uh, like circular, uh, uh, circular coordinates or you can use spherical coordinates or some other coordinates. <coughs> what determines the choice of coordinates? I think it is our convenience uh, in certain geometries certain things become convenient certain other geometries some other things become convenient and there is no rule as to you have to choose this whatever works works okay uh, yeah yes ma'am. Thank you. So that is a mistake, pressure is 0 at both ends. No, P prime, P prime is fluctuating pressure. So, I mean, it is not derivative, so it is not a mistake. Yeah, what is the problem? You can ask me without interpreting. D by dt, no, it's prime stands for fluctuating pressure. Okay. So, if I, um, as far as possible, I try to keep the primes. If I forget, just apologize. Uh, let me know and I will put it back. <coughs> so, when the pressure is 0 at both ends, sign is a very natural choice. So, uh, what we are going to choose are the um, see when we, we saw in the earlier analysis of McManus et al that the modes get shifted a little bit right the frequencies get shifted but what you are going to choose as the basis function is the natural modes. So what is the natural mode uh, in uh, natural mode happen when there is no driving okay. So if you remove this right hand side and solve for it you get the natural mode or in another way of saying it is we take the um, we linearize the equation and take the self adjoint part and its uh, modes are what we use but that is a very fancy way of saying it just say natural modes that means in the absence of heat release whatever are the modes that is what we use for the basis function which means open open tube pressure will go like sine and velocity will go like cos huh? cosine yeah fantastic. <coughs> so we will say this is purely for terms to cancel in the end and to make the equations look pretty you do not need to put this gamma m over j pi and all that uh, it is just to make things look neat and, and so on some people like that some people do not but so I leave it to you. So now what we do <coughs> we will substitute this into the momentum equation okay so let us substitute this expansion into momentum equation. Before I proceed, I must say that this uh, technique uh, was introduced by uh, introduced in the context of solid rocket motor. I'll give the original references in the next class, uh, and uh, we are just using it for a DKT. And uh, uh, particularly because in the 1970s and so on, now maybe it's possible to it is possible to solve the PDE with CFD and so on, but definitely not in 60s and 70s. Uh, so at that time, they came up with this technique too. Uh, do approximate solution which worked quite well actually. So if you substitute this expansion into the momentum equation you will get this is uh, there gamma m w prime by w t equal to so you have take And now we need to differentiate this. So when you differentiate, there is a j pi coming. So 
now you can see why I had the gamma m and j pi. So this can cancel here. This will go here. So I will get do u prime by del t equal to sigma j equal to one to n cos j pi x times eta j. So if you integrate this, you will get u prime equal to j equal to one to n. I'll write this here. So you see I knew the answer that is why I put a dot here and then when you integrated the uh, dot went away. So you work out once make a mess then you clean up then you get things which look very nice. So velocity is this and this is pressure both are functions of x and time. So this is the expression for the fluctuating pressure this is the expression for the fluctuating velocity is this clear. So we also implicitly have the equation d eta over dt equal to eta j dot okay. So this is an equation that is how you only if this is valid you get the solution here right. So it is built into it. You can also write uh, pressure as having some coefficients a and velocity as having some coefficient b and then there is a relation between a and b but I thought this looks nice so Kaushik thought, thought, uh, thought the same way so. So uh, now uh, we need to get we have pressure we have du by dt we have pressure so we need dou p by dou x and dou u by dou x to use in the equation right. So the we, we need this term and, and, and this term. So dou u by dou x equal to minus sigma j equal to 1 to n j pi eta j sin j pi x and dou p by dou t equal to minus sigma j equal to 1 to n gamma m over j pi d by dt of eta j dot sin j pi x. We'll just pause for a minute for you to check this relationship. So if you differentiate this um, you are differentiating with x so this does not have any dependence on x so it comes straight through but when you differentiate cos you get minus sign and then the j pi is a coefficient which comes out. Uh, similarly to get the pressure we have this is the expression for pressure and we substitute this aj here so that is the minus gamma m over j pi. So uh, when we uh, do d over dt this uh, sign is uh, not a function of time so this is the function of time and when you take d over dt you get d dt of eta j dot is this clear. So now we can substitute all this into this pd and uh, we can get the equation okay. So we, um, uh, sub, we, we substitute this into energy equation okay. So you will get this term.
so d p by d t has this sin j pi x d u over d x also has a sin j pi, j pi x. So, I have taken that thing out. So, dou p by dou t is this this term straight and then I have gamma m dou u by dou x. So, gamma m multiplied by this term. So, that is what is here this is equal to the source term in the right side. Is that clear? We will uh, clean up to make the equation look a little bit good. So, we will push this minus sign to the right side and multiply by j pi and cancel the gamma m, okay. then it will clean up a little bit. So, I trust you remember that we have the delta function because the wire is the heater wire is uh, very small uh, of the order of millimeter or sub millimeter and the length of the duct is of the order of a meter. So, this is the equation we have to solve. Uh, so, we have actually we have one more equation what is the other equation? Yeah, eta d eta by d t equal to eta dot. So, if you want you can um, substitute this here and write this as d squared eta j or dt squared and, uh, 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 and, and so on that is the way it will, it will look like a yeah right because you look here this uh, you have terms which are uh, eta 1 cos pi x eta 2 cos uh, 2 pi x eta 3 cos 3 pi x. So, each of the term when you differentiate cos pi x will have a, a, a pi coming in front, uh, the second one will have a 2 pi. So, you have to put the sigma outside because each term has a different uh, coefficient depending on the j. Is that okay? So, in the uh, traditional way of doing things, if you see the old uh, 1960s, 70s stuff. They actually do this uh, write this as d squared eta j or d t squared and, and solve it, but I will not do that. Uh, I will keep it this way in this form d eta over d t equal to eta j dot and then uh, uh, so this is my one equation and this is the other other equation and the reason I do that is then I can stack up eta dot and eta j dot and then I can get a equation of the form. Uh, Uh, I, I want to express the uh, entire equation in this form, which will then enable me to use the uh, tools and the machineries available from dynamical system theory. Uh, so, so I am not going to convert this into a second order uh, differential, I will just keep it that way. Okay, is this clear? So, uh, we can uh, this j pi is like it is a non dimensional wave number. So, we can wave number, we can call it k j or omega j all would be same because we are non dimensional. So, I will use k j or omega j alternatively, but it just does not matter because now we are in non dimensional. <coughs> Am I going too slow? Can I hear 
on the corridor private opinion some say going too fast some say some say going too slow but i don't have a, i have only random samples so i don't have an average opinion in front of the camera you won't say anything okay <laughs> they will edit it so you can tell me very bluntly so what uh, so we have this equation and it looks like a mess here and as and we should point out there is j pi and sigma and all that so we want to get rid of the sigma and get individual equation so we will adopt this methodology which i preached in the beginning that is uh, in the case of the vector equation i multiplied by ijk which i said is like a so i ijk is not, not really a multiplication it's like really a special kind of multiplication called inner product so we will take a inner product in the functional space so how do you take a inner inner product in the functional space <coughs> hmm? yeah so multiply with the same basis function and integrate over the support integrate over the domain which is 0 to 1 i mean 0 to l but we are non dimensional so it's 0 to 1 so that's the way we take a inner product we we multiply the whole equation by individual basis function so one time we can multiply by uh, sin pi x then sin 2 pi x sin 3 pi x whatever and then we integrate it over the entire domain uh, that that's the definition of inner product okay i'm not going to write those mathematical uh, definitions but i just want to explain it in um, some uh, easy way to understand so uh, when you do that capital X everywhere, so it is small X but written in that is good. So uh, what is the distinction between J and N? If you are confused, this is like a double sum, so J and sin J. So it is so it's like um, you have this term uh, velocity which is having all the terms in it and that you have put it into a different equation, so there is a sum of everything. But then we are taking one of those numbers, so you just take either sin pi x or sin 2 pi x or sin 3 pi x and then multiply and then you integrate and now the magic happens because the signs have some very nice property or identity, integral 0 to 1 sin j pi x sin n pi x dx equal to delta j n over 2. So, we can certainly use that and we have we can use one more identity So, if you integrate multiply delta uh, dx here, so if you multiply a function by delta function and integrate over the domain, you will get the, the integral is the value of the function at that location okay, uh, uh, at this xf. So, we can use these two identities and then <coughs> this equation dramatically simplifies. Any questions at this point?
Uh, in life also we are constantly using basis function. For example, if you see, if you are watching movies and, and you are having, uh, you watch Hindi movies, Telugu movies, uh, Tamil movie and English movie. So, the uh, you can split up what you are doing in terms of those basis functions. Okay. So, we are always uh, characterizing in, in our, uh, in, in day to day life also things in terms of basis function. So, if you do this right away you get to simplify this term and we also get to simplify this term. Okay. So, the sigma vanishes and you will get and you have to put those uh, square root things so instead of u you have to type uf go back here again. So, when we integrated this equation uh, using this identity when you have f of x times delta of x minus x f if you integrate from 0 to 1 the answer is f of x f. So, what you have to do is just put uh, everywhere uh, the value of x f and you will get the answer. So, yeah, so you just have to use uh, x f here, okay. So, because of the delta function we do not have n anymore we wrote in terms of j, you could do vice versa also you can write in terms of n and not in terms of j, it is up to you just index, is this clear. And we must not forget that we have one more equation. So, this is our other equation. So, we can take this uh, 2 to the other side. So, what is this? This is actually a set of ordinary different equations now and we can actually write them in the uh, form if chi equal to eta 1, eta 1 dot, eta 2, eta 2 dot up to eta n, eta n dot and how many terms you have to take depend on your convergence and so on. Okay. So, this is the uh, language of dynamical systems and so on. it is f chi if it is linearized. So, uh, the next question is we did not have any damping in this equation at all right. I mean, we did not have any damping in this equation and reality thermocracy system have damping. So, we will take damping in ad hoc way given by uh, this person called Matt View. Uh, details of that is given in this paper which I gave you. So, what uh, it does is
So, if you want you can incorporate a model for damping and you can put um, some kind of experimentally or empirically obtained correlations for this values of psi j's. Yeah. 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 So, let us not let us go back and let us keep this that way. So, we just uh, keep j pi there and, and just bring the gamma m, just get rid of the gamma m. So, so I will have uh, like a so, this will be j pi and there will be a 1 over j pi here. Yeah, okay. So, now if I do this uh, multiplication, this will not be there. So, I will have uh, 1 over j pi here and this will be there for kj. And uh, yeah, now it is okay to bring it that side. Yeah, because it's it's n actually. So you're saying I should write n here. Yeah. Now it's okay. It doesn't matter whether you change it to n or j, but I don't mind doing n. But you can use any index you want. So let's keep it j. Or if you are keen, we can change it over to n. So, we, our result is okay and <coughs> and it is we can use any index here, but yeah I mean in the middle I made two mistakes and <laughs> it became okay, sorry about that. So, now we have a yeah. So now we actually have a like a delay differential equation. I, I will not try to deal with that. I will try to expand this this term in a um, around a uf of t and simplify things so that I want to keep things simple and with without introducing any new complications. So we linearize the time delay and and we say that's possible only when the time delay is small and people have done experiments and found that the time delay for the Riki tube is small, but for some other systems it may be very large like premix flame it has large delays, but here it is very small. So, we I think I will not get to uh, uh, finish this uh, in 5 minutes, it will take more than that. So, I will uh, stop at this point and continue in next class, uh, because it, the, to write this in a matrix form is going to take some time. If there are any questions you can ask me at this point. Uh, otherwise to summarize what we did, uh, we took the partial different equation and we uh, substituted for the variables pressure and velocity in terms of the basis function which are actually the natural modes of the duct. Uh, then you, uh, so, we substituted this into the P d and then we projected the P d on the basis functions themselves and then now we got the uh, ordinary differential equation for the coefficients and now we are attempting to solve for this. So, that is where we are. Uh, so, uh, to change the we will in the next class change it from a delayed differential equation to ordinary differential equation. Okay, thanks. <coughs>